Hey everyone, this is Elias from RevMatch Media, and today we have a little review for you. Actually, it's a mini review. So this is the Racebox Mini. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this little guy. Let's go ahead and get started. I want to first thank the team over at Racebox for sending me this little guy. Uh, they did send it to me free of charge for my review, but again, this is still my full unbiased opinion of the unit. First, I want to start out with when you open the box, you get this little guy. It's small. <laughs> it's really small. It reminds me of those little pucks that you get when you are at a restaurant. Um, but yeah, this, this is really tiny and it, it's maybe a little bit smaller than a hockey puck, but yeah, it's about that size. So yeah, we have that. And then inside of that, we do have, inside of the box, we also get a USB charging cable uh, for the unit. We also have probably, gosh, uh, like four different types of mounts for it. So we do have the Velcro, which is, this is really, really tough Velcro. So obviously it has the sticky side and then obviously, you know, you put one on the unit, one on your vehicle, and then you obviously do that. Um, if you don't want to use that, we do have the sort of this like soft pad that is like a non-slip pad, as well as another kind of adhesive uh, pad that you can put, you know, on both sides, just stick it on there for more permanent solution. My favorite though is when you take a look under, you actually have like the quarter inch uh, for like tripod, like those, those little mounts. Uh, and yeah, you can just really use like a GoPro suction cup and, and get that. And that's actually what I did. So I actually have my camera mount, my old camera mount. And uh, this guy wasn't strong enough for my big camera, but for this, because it's such a lightweight unit, uh, I am able to just go ahead and screw this on and we're in business. That's it. I can just put that on my on my windshield and I am good to go. Yeah, it's pretty good. And if I don't want to do that, there's kind of a little bit of a secret mount and that is the magnets. This thing actually has magnets underneath and you are able to uh, obviously anything that that is metal and it attaches. Personally though, I would still probably use the suction cup uh, just because sometimes some of our press cars can be pretty violently, uh, you know, in acceleration. So my recommendation is go more permanent with the sticky mounts, or in my case, um, just use a suction cup mount, which I'll probably pick up just a single one, a better single one, so that way I don't have to deal with putting three guys uh, onto the windshield or, or any surface. But yeah, this little guy is, is great. So we have that. Now, one thing that I really like about this is it has a tiny, tiny little thing. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is for the USB-C port. So the USB-C port actually can be covered by that little plastic and, or that little rubber, because this is gonna give you some, uh, you know, it's gonna be water repellent. So in the sense of, you know, if you're using this on a boat, if you're using this on a motorcycle or just using it on a, a maybe a go-kart and it's raining, it's gonna be resistant to the water, which is nice. You know, we have that safety and make sure that no, no water gets into the model itself. So it's definitely a more outdoors type of, of unit. So I do wanna go through some of the more technical uh, tech specs of it. So we do have a 25 hertz GPS module in this. Uh, it's really accurate. Um, you know, it can, it can sense obviously the smallest of movements. Um, I was really surprised. I believe they mentioned up to like four inch difference is the, uh, you know, the, the difference between real, you know, the varying kind of degree to it. So that's actually really, really good. And one of my also favorite things is this does have Bluetooth 5.2. It is compatible with Android and iOS smartphones. And one of my things that I love about press cars is when they have wireless Apple CarPlay. The only thing is those ten, that connection tends to be really aggressive and not letting anything else connect to it or your phone connect to anything else. But I was actually surprised. This little guy was able to kind of defeat <laughs> Apple Wireless CarPlay and it actually lets you connect to that. And 
I'm not saying listen to music while you're on the track because it can be distracting, but what I mean by what, what's great about it is I don't have to delete my phone or I don't have to disconnect my phone from my from my car in order to make sure that this is, you know, you're capturing the data or the telemetry for it. So that was a huge thing for me where I was really impressed and was saying, whoa, this is actually cool. You know, because again, setups for those Apple CarPlay systems can sometimes be a pain, um, especially if it's something that you've connected to it. But anyways, it's really good at letting you do both things at the same time. Now, if you wanna use the proprietary uh, Racebox app, you can. You also have the option of using third-party apps like Race Chrono, uh, Harry's Lap Timer, and MX Buddy, which they mention on their website. The other thing I was really surprised with was the battery on this. So this does have an 1100 milliamp uh, LiPo battery. Uh, it does have up to 20 hours of usage and one year of standby. That was insane, because uh, that surprised me, because I got this, and I started playing with it, I connected to it really quick, and then I was wondering, I was like, oh man, you know, when I went to actually go ahead and use it multiple times, I was worried, I'm like, oh, am I gonna run out of battery? I forgot to charge it. Not to worry, I still have uh, probably about 75% of the battery life on this. So that's definitely a, a nice, uh, thing to have. And this does have the USB-C uh, connection, which takes three hours to fully charge this. So, you know, if you do a whole hour, you know, a whole day of racing at night, just plug it in for three hours and you're good to go. And like I mentioned, this is splash resistant, safe to use on jet skis, boats, or in the rain, which is nice. Uh, you know, again, we have that durability on this. Uh, we also have a range of four G's for the accelerometer. Yeah, uh, if you guys are hitting four G's in your car, let me know what you're driving because I'd like to come along <laughs> and feel what four G's is like. But it's awesome or, you know, any other, any other uh, vehicle that has that. But it's nice to have that buffer, that large four G's or four, uh, you know, G's of range for this little guy. So let's go ahead and set this guy up with this. Uh, I will tell you when I set it up for the first time, I was kind of second guessing myself. I was thinking it cannot be that easy. Um, it actually is pretty easy to set up. So let's get started. So I'll go ahead and press my Racebox app and it's logging me in. And you're gonna see it's asking me if I wanna connect to my last race box. I'll go ahead and say no. I like to still leave that window up just in case. Uh, but I go ahead and I press under devices and I can see I have my RevMatch Media, uh, which was my, my original race box unit. So I'll press that little uh, down arrow on the top left and I'll press add new device. And so I have the option of another, maybe if I wanna set up another race box original or if I wanna do a race box mini. In this case, we'll go ahead and press Racebox Mini, and then <laughs> you can see before I even finish my sentence, and yes, this is real time, uh, it actually went ahead and set up the, or I actually found it in range. So I'll go ahead and press that, and I'll name it at the top. This guy we are going to name Rev Match, oh, let's make that capital, Match Mini. And we're not gonna set a default, uh, vehicle because again, with us getting the press cars are constantly changing. So we'll go ahead and hit save. That's it. That's it. That's all I got to do. It's ready to go. Now we'll go through some of the settings here. Uh, we'll go to settings and I will set it up with the accelerometer and gyroscope. Now the unit is actually on a table off screen. Um, and yeah, you can see, I'll go ahead and pick it up. Simulate like if I'm accelerating, Simulate like if I'm braking, <laughs> turning left, turning right. <laughs> so it is actually really accurate as well uh, with, with the movement. Now the other thing as well is when I decide to mount it on this guy, so we'll go ahead and do a quick spinny on this. And when I mount it on this, again, uh, it's not gonna be the most accurate in the kind of, okay, you know, is it flat <laughs> or is it even? But I can go ahead, so we'll go ahead and hold this off to the side here 
and let's simulate like that is the location. I'll go ahead and press calibrate and it's gonna ask if I wanna calibrate the orientation of the device. So I'll press start and it calibrated it. Now, if you want to uh, do an X axis calibration, you can, um, you would have to accelerate, which in this case we're not, cause obviously we're not in a car and we'll go ahead and skip in this case and we accelerate and turn. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it's, it's set up, it's ready to go. And let me see if I can catch it back to kind of where I had it. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, you can see again, it's zeroed out, which is a great little thing. Uh, again, it, it makes it easy for you to set it, not have to be super accurate about it when you are putting it on your car. Uh, so one of the things I do like to do is I'll go to new drag session and I will actually press that little pencil and it lets me actually configure how I want my custom mode to be, you know, what do I want to measure? Do I want to measure distance? So I want to measure speed. Um, and I am able to, so we'll go ahead and set it up. Uh, so let's do zero to 30 is fine. Uh, actually let's do zero to 60 here on this one. And we're not going to do uh, kilometers. We're going to do miles per hour. And then here we'll just set it at distance. So we will set the quarter mile. Uh, so we will set miles there and we will scroll to quarter because we want zero to 60 and then quarter mile. And then let's do, uh, let's do speed. And we are going to do actually, we'll do 60 to zero because yes, you can also do the acceleration. You can see that as well as let me do 60 or yeah, I think where you are. Yeah. And if I don't need that third one, I can just go ahead and set it to off and I'm set. That's all I need to do. I'm good to go. I can save it. And then when I go to recall, I can press there and it's good to go. I can start. I can actually press that there and it will show me the kilometers per hour. It'll show me, you know, my distance. So it does have that great, you know, information there. We can do a new track session. Uh, we can set up a custom track, uh, you know, just all this information in there, which is nice. And we have that predictive, which I, one of my favorite things as well with this, but yeah, it, it's really that simple. Well, let's go ahead and go for a quick ride and uh, I'll show you some cool uh, things with this. Well guys, so now we are in the car. I do have my uh, race box mini mounted there. I use my cheapo, you know, GoPro mount that I had before uh, and it worked. I mean, it's, it's not a heavy unit, which is, which is good because, you know, you can literally use really small mounts. So I, I do like that. It does have the thread screw on it, which is what I'm using with it. Because again, it's, you know, I, I don't, this isn't my car, so I don't want to put like any, any tape or anything like that. It does have the magnet to it. Um, and it was pretty good. I just, with how fast this car accelerates, I didn't want to chance that, but yeah, it's, it's on there. Uh, I am running the custom thing that I set up for drag, uh, and we're going to go ahead and test it. We're going to go ahead and switch over to sport mode and, uh, go ahead and we'll do a couple of runs. And yeah, there is my run. Uh, I have it. <laughs> so when I stopped, I was able to see it gave me my, my information, uh, depending on what I set up for that. And yeah, that it's, it's that easy. And the fact that I can, you know, just literally turn it on, tell it to calibrate based on, because again, my, my mount isn't maybe the straightest, um, but you find a flat surface, a uh, flat area and you calibrate it. And it will, you know, yeah, I just realized it's really at an angle. So it's great that it's still able to offset for that. Well, guys, there you have it. 
Uh, I want to thank again the, the team over at Racebox for letting me have this little guy. Again, it, it was free of charge, but this is my honest review of the unit. Um, I did love it. <laughs> it's a really awesome little thing. Uh, yeah, we may uh, put this on a go-kart. We may get, like I said, a, a better mount than, than this one. Maybe just like a one suction cup to just uh, plop it on there and be good to go. Uh, and maybe if we get a more, maybe we pick up a project car soon and uh, we use these guys to permanently have it there or have a mounting place for this. But yeah, I've been really impressed with how much this little guy can do. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed my mini review of the Racebox Mini, and remember, find the right gear. See ya.